There's one thing in the house that's sure to drive you mad, and that is squeaky floorboards. Now this particular house has got some very noisy boards in the master bedroom. These boards are so noisy in fact that when one person gets out of bed it then disturbs the other person and they tend to wake up and that is definitely not a good situation. Now this is a modern house and I'm suspecting that it doesn't have traditional six inch wide pine boards. It's almost certainly going to have a cable floor, chipboard floor. If it has it'll be tricky because those boards are usually 2.4 meters long and 600 millimeters wide tongued and grooved around the edges so once a board is down it's locked into its adjacent one so you can't just lift the nails or the screws and lift the board out i'm going to have to cut down the joint between all the boards i suspect and break that tongue and groove and that's going to be a bit of a fiddle now at this point i just want to pause because i've got a little word of warning it's a request really please whatever you do don't go and put screws straight through the carpet into the floor below that's not the way to solve your problem. Amazingly, there are videos out there showing guys doing just that. They bought this three prong contraption to hold the carpet down. They put a screw through the middle. Happy days for them. Until, of course, they hit an electric cable, in which case they're going to blow a fuse, trip a switch, get an electric shock. They might even electrocute themselves. Or they might hit a pipe, a water pipe, central heating pipe. And you may not know about that if you hit a pipe. You may not know about it for several days, not until you look up at the ceiling and you see a horrible brown stain on there. And maybe there's a little wet patch on the carpet down below and then you realize what's happened. In either of those scenarios, you're gonna end up taking the floor up anyway. So don't just put screws through, straight through the floor. No professional will ever do that. Take the floor up first, find the problem, then cure it. Right, onwards with this job. Lifting the corner of the carpet is generally the easiest place to start. Just don't catch your fingers on the gripper rods, you'll know about it if you do. Under the carpet is underlay, and under that there's usually a paper sheet known as paper felt. Cable floor recommend either nailing or screwing their bores down, and definitely gluing them, so that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm trying my multi-tool, it didn't work very well, the blade was too small and it was far too noisy. Then I tried cutting along the joint with my circular saw. The gap between the boards tended to guide the blade, but there was a chance of going offline, and I didn't want to risk that in case the saw kicked back on me. So not wanting an accident, I decided to use the track, which is what I should have done in the first place. Right, that's the first of many. That's what we're looking at. This was a bit close. Fortunately, I haven't nicked it. Now, it's always a good idea to check under these floors. You can see those cables, they're halfway down these joists, so there's no chance of me catching those with the screws. I'm going to have to take most of this up, I think, which is a bit of a pain. So this is my method of removing the nails. You'll need a half-inch chisel. Probably don't use your best one. A small prying bar and a claw hammer. So what I've been doing is taking out a sliver of chipboard on two sides of the nail and then a sliver across the top. Just be careful you don't knit the chisel blade on the nail. Next take the prying bar, knock the fork end under the head of the nail. Once it's got a grip, push down firmly and with a bit of luck the head will just pop up. Use the claw hammer to lever it out. These are ring shank nails, two and a half inch. These are serrated which gives a good hold once they've gone into the joist below. This took about a minute to take out, so not that difficult really. This board is particularly squeaky. You can actually see the movement in it. I'm not really sure why it moves so much, but I'm going to try to add some noggins underneath, gluing and screwing them into place. I decided to cut out this section of board. To make life easier, I'm using the track. I set the blade depth stop on the circular saw, so the teeth just penetrate the underside. That way I'm not nicking more of the joist than is absolutely necessary. I figured out that by removing this section I'd be able to refit it without the edges rubbing and squeaking. Now I'm cutting the noggins from 4x2s. These will give the floor extra support along the edges. It's a good idea to drill pilot holes in the ends of these, otherwise the screws are likely to split the wood. 
I've glued and screwed the noggins and I've used two 60mm screws in each end. That's what they look like, glued and screwed down. I am slowly but surely getting there with this room. It's taking quite a while to lift these boards up. I'm drilling pilot holes here before screwing the boards down. Easy enough, although rather tedious. Now when you've cut a board out like this, the chances are you will have cut through the tongue. So that's the edge of one board, and this is the piece off the corresponding board. And you really want to glue this back in here to give it some strength. This particular glue is a, a foaming glue. It expands to about three times its normal size. You don't need an awful lot of this. Which way around does it go? That way around. Well, I'm going to put glue down both these edges. I can do with a bigger bottle of this so that'll be easier to squeeze. But dampen this edge, seems strange dampening an edge, but there we are. Lay it in position and put the screws back. And you can see how this glue foams. That is curing, that's still quite sticky, so I'm not going to touch it. Now it's always a good idea to check under these floors. You can see those cables, they're halfway down these joists, so there's no chance of me catching those with the screws. Well, I've just run my trap saw down this edge lifted out this square panel. All right, this glue is not the easiest to get out. The plastic's quite stiff. Well, I don't recommend buying this glue in such a smooth pot. Oh, do you know what? The rest of this glue has gone off inside the pot. Yeah, I'm not sure that I'd recommend this. Fortunately, I have got another bottle. Good, that's coming out with a reasonable flow rate. We're in. All we'll have to do now is to put the screws back in. The multi-tool did actually come in handy here just for squaring off a cut I'd made with a circular saw. Now that I've lifted this piece of floorboard out you can see there's nothing here really for it to rest on. It's about five millimeters so I've got a couple of scrap pieces which I shall screw to the sides, one this end one up that end, give it a bit more support. If you look at this that I've put in, it doesn't line up with that one. Now the builders put that in when they built the house. So when I cut the floor, well you can see the blade has just nicked the very edge of this. So again I'm going to have to cut a couple of supports to put on the side here. A couple of offcuts will do nicely. The final piece to go back Nail and glue that in there, and then do the same this end too. This little piece is to go back on this edge. With the last piece of flooring back, and having waited for the glue to dry, I can clean up the excess with a chisel. So that's finished. I chuck up about two thirds of the floor. To be honest, it's not perfect, but it is considerably quieter. Now having done the bedroom, I realised that the hall floor was just as bad. So of course I had to sort that one out too. Here I've lifted out a square panel in between the bedroom and the bathroom doors. This L section seemed particularly noisy. I decided to isolate this piece of floor by cutting it close to the wall, fixing several noggins and then screwing it all back down. I discovered a little issue having lifted this. The two metal joist hangers are preventing the floor from sitting flat, so I fix that by chiselling out a couple of recesses in the underside of the floor. Now it sits down flush. This one, I just screwed it, I haven't glued it. And the same goes for this L-shaped piece here. So all I've got to do now is to put the paper felt back and then the carpet. This originally was stapled, but I don't have my stapler with me. So I went out and bought some 15mm clout nails, and they'll do the job. Ideally, you'd use a carpet stretcher here, but with such a small area, I found that shuffling the carpet back into place with my feet worked just as well. And I actually didn't have a carpet stretcher anyway. Finish off by tucking the edges onto the grippers. You can buy a carpet tucking tool, which is much like a brick bolster. But I've always found a chisel or a flat bladed screwdriver or even a small paint scraper works just as well. And we've just got the nosing to do. 
Right, so that's it. Done. Bedroom and hall. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've not already done so, do consider subscribing. So that's all for now, and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now. Take care.